Hello class, this is uh, Professor Thorpe. I am going to do a quick tutorial on how to set up your InDesign assignment for this week. Uh, some of you are already familiar with InDesign, but um, this might be a, a little refresher, or if you're not familiar with it, you can just kind of follow along to kind of get the assignment moving a little bit quicker. The first thing I want you to do is open up InDesign, which I have open on my screen already. I'm going to go over here to this dialog box and click New. So if you're in the new CS, uh, any of the CC um, programs, you should have a dialog box. If not, you're going to have to go to File, which is up here in the top corner. You click File and then go down to New. Uh, for this assignment, we need a letter. So I'm going to go up here. If, if, if that doesn't show up, you can click on Print up at the top and go to Letter. And then over here is where we're going to set all of our preferences. So 8.5 by 11. Um, if yours is in picas, you can change that from picas, point, picas to inches. Inches is uh, the U.S. way that we do it. Um, picas is a lot in Europe. A lot of people and a lot of typographers use pica. But uh, we're going to keep it on inches. We want it to be portrait. And we're going to come down here to bleed and slug. It might not be selected. If not, you just click on that. And we're going to change it to 0.125. So I just click the up arrow or you can just type it in. Make sure your box is linked so all four of them change. 0.125 inches and we're going to do three columns. So one, two, three. Uh, the gutter, that's a pretty good gutter, it doesn't matter. I'm going to turn off facing pages. Facing pages is if we were doing it in a book format and the pages needed to be side by side. So I'm going to turn that off because this is just a one page ad. So I'm going to title it. InDesign assignment. And then I have my bleed, I have my columns, I have my size, so I'm going to click create. Alright, so this is the first step. Uh, the next thing I think we're adding is uh, separate layers for each of the different things. So I'm going to go move to my layer menu, I'm going to click create new layer down here at the bottom so create new layer and I need four layers so I clicked it four times and now I'm going to double click on it to add the title so I'm going to title it text I'm going to title this one graphics this one's going to be titled images Oops. images and this one's going to be titled background all right so we have our four different layers all right and they're labeled next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our guides so there's two ways to add in guides you can either click and hold on the ruler and drag it down like this and that gives you a guide you can also do that from the side ruler click and drag out and that gives you a guide uh, we're going to do three sections, so we're going to have one, two, and three guides on the screen. Um, the way that I would suggest doing it to keep them equally uh, spaced is I go up here to um, layout and go down to margin and, oh, sorry, create guides. So we're going to go create guides, and I'm just going to type in, I want three rows. So rows go horizontally, columns go vertically. So three rows, um, we can set the gutter to zero if you don't want it to be in there. Make sure um, our guides so fit to page. We don't want it to fit to the margins. We want it to go all the way from edge to edge. So, and then I'm gonna click right here, remove existing ruler guides because I added two guides already. So I'm gonna click okay. And then I have my three guides put on there. So now I have a, a top quadrant, a middle quadrant, and a bottom quadrant. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is add in some images. So I'm going to add in my images by going up to File, going down to Place, and I'm going to choose the images. I already have um, some on my desktop, so I'm going to click this one. And I'm, I, I don't need to have any import options. I'm just going to add it directly to my um, screen. So I'm going to click Open. And the way that it works is you click and you drag, and that creates your box everything in InDesign goes in a box so I put my image right there and the next thing I need to do is um, 
add a second image so I'm gonna go back up to file go to place and then I'm add a second image click open and it added it right into the last one so I'm gonna undo replace and then it allows me to place it where I want so I'm gonna click this time and drag so I just went up to undo edit undo and then I, I did it separately if I didn't have this box I'm gonna delete this if I didn't have this box selected when I um, made the place command it would just add it separately so I'm gonna do it again deselect my box go to file place I'm gonna choose the football player and this time I can drag and place it how I want it uh, next thing I'm gonna do is move my first image down to oops I moved it within the box when you're moving these make sure you grab it from a corner if you grab it from the circle in the center it moves it within the box so you don't want to do that so grab it from a corner try not to grab it from the center when it turns into a hand so I'm gonna move this image down to the bottom left corner and I'm gonna make sure that I have it on the right layer so right now it's on the background layer so I'm gonna grab that little box while it's selected and drag it down to images so now it's on the image layer I'm going to do the same for the football player. I'm going to grab the box, click, and I'm going to drag it down to the image layer. Oh, let's do it again. And so now they're both on the image layer. Um, so I put the first one in. It says the first image needs to be taken into the bleed in the bottom left corner. The other should be in the upper third or centered on the one third mark. So upper third or centered. So I'm going to center it right there. And the text should wrap around it. These images must not be distorted. So you could do it in the upper third, which would be right here, this area, or centered right on here's the center line on the on the one third mark. So oops, let me I move my image again. Let me move this up to the center and the one third mark. Alright, so I, I centered this image on the on the upper third line and centered it on the page. And this image is a little bit large, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it and I'm going to reduce the size. I'm making sure that this is connected, uh, the link is not broken. I'm going to reduce it to 80% and they both will jump, to, so now I have an 80% size image. Um, I think that's probably the best way to do this. To, to make sure that when you're reducing your image, that because you the other way to do it would be to to click on a corner and hold the uh, control and shift and then reduce the size like that uh, the shift is important because it keeps it proportional but um, if you use these options bar at the top here it makes it a little bit simpler because you can just type in what you want uh, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to add text to wrap around these images all right so I'm going to go over to my text box I'm going to grab my text tool and I think I need three columns so I'm going to do one column right here and I'm just lining it up to the the grid that I already have on the screen and I'm going to do another text box again lining it up to the grid and a third text box all right and there each of these are right now are separate text boxes um, uh, and the reason why I just did it like this because we're going to fill it with dummy text but um, what you can do is you can if you have text already you can just do one box and, and when you get the overflow you can click down at the bottom right here and then drag it to the next box to link it together so I just link these two boxes together and I'm going to link the third box by clicking and clicking on it uh, so now all three of these boxes are linked and what that means is when I put the text in the first box any extra text I have will overflow into the next boxes. So I'm going to click text. I'm going to go down to fill with placeholder text and fill those up. Um, if you're on the, the newest version of InDesign on the Mac, it'll automatically come up with placeholder text. So you don't even have to, you don't even have to add it in. I think as soon as you do a text box, it comes up with placeholder text. So right now we have our, our text, all three in the same place. Uh, I'm going to make sure these are on the right layer, so I'm going to hold down shift while I select them and I'm going to drag those to my text layer. And so now my images and my text, and I want this image to have text wrap around it. So I'm going to click over here and go up to window. I'm going to go down to text wrap, click on text wrap, 
and my text wrap box showed up right here and I want to make sure that this has text that wraps around the object shape so now it wraps around the object shape um, if I want I can add a, a, a bleed around it so that it um, has a little bit of space um, let's see what do we need use fit to frame proportion one of the frame proportion for the other find under the object menu fitting so we're going to add a headline to this so I'm going to do the same down here actually say wrap around I'm going to add a bleed around it and then next I'm going to add a headline so I'm going to click over here this is going to be on this layer right here and let me actually I should be on the text so I'm going to undo that so I'm going to click on my text and in my headline this headline is going to be what should the headline say headline one so to I was using keystrokes there I was using my control shift and my angled bracket to increase the size but you can also come up here to the top here and just make it larger I'm just going to type in 150 make so it uh, might be a little bit too large let's see 80 will work I guess um, and oh actually so I have a headline in there and my columns of text so I want my headline to be at the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all three of these text boxes and I'm going to lower those and my headlines at the top put it inside my margin just by dragging it and it looks a little bit large so I'm going to reduce it just a little bit so I want to make sure my point is 12 points so I'm going to select it come up to the options bar again I see that it's at 12 point um, I have a uh, minion pro you can use any fonts that comes up um, sometimes uh, you might want to change the way it is that you have your your italic your medium your bold your black uh, regular is just fine for this one we want to make sure the color is correct so I'm going to come over here to the color I'm going to choose black as my color and let's see wrap your text around the center image use text row you can find this please attach both and export so now I'm going to save this um, my headline I'd like my headline to be centered so what I'm going to do I'm going to double click in it uh, you don't have to you can you don't have to double click you could just actually single click in it I know I was fooling with the headline a little bit here uh, the headline needs to be flush right so I'm gonna click on this I'm gonna put my cursor in it by double clicking and then I'm gonna go up to the top of my options bar and say align right and I want it to be inside the margin so I'm gonna do like this so my headline is flush right and it has to be the color of the predominant picture so I'm gonna select it Alright, so I'm going to use my color picker. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose the predominant color from my center image. Or from this largest image. So I think the predominant color is green. So I'll click green. And it picked blue. Let me try this again. I don't know why it's picking blue. Well, I guess blue. I don't know why it's coming up with blue, but let me see if I can. So what I can do is I can um, I can come over here and go back to my text tool, click on the T, and I want green because green is the predominant color. So I actually select it and green that's the predominant color and I just click away to get rid of that go back to my my move tool and so my headline is flush right and it's in the predominant color of green this is your text overflow right here if we were to make this into another text box we click on that and we can add another text box of all that extra text that 
um, that didn't get fit in once we added the images and the wraparound. That's all that that is. I usually keep a little box on the side here if I ever have an overflow, just so I remember to place it in at a later time. And I can see it. I usually change the, the color of it so that it um, so that it, it uh, stands out. So I'm going to go with like a, a fuchsia just so I know that that text is there. If you're creating an ad, this would be what you'd want to have uh, eventually to fit it in. You have to adjust your, your paragraph, your lighting, and your, your kerning, and uh, your tracking, and all these different things to kind of get that in there. Uh, horizontal spacing, so I might like select all of these, and then uh, change my horizontal spacing, oops, my horizontal spacing uh, to like 90% to see if I can get some of it back in there. Um, you never want to go below 85. Uh, 80 if you're doing 80% um, if you're doing a disclaimer copy. That's a little copy at the bottom of an ad. But uh, you never want to go below 80, 85. So you know I could take this down to. I'm gonna keep leave it at 90. But um, you know maybe I want to change my spacing. I'm not gonna be able to get that rest of the text in there. This is when I'd go back and edit the copy, taking out what I don't need. Some extra words here and there might fix that, but um, that just lets me know what, how much text I have left. So I'm gonna go up to File, I'm gonna go down to Save, and again, this has to be an IDML file. IDML, uh, I have one in there, so I'm gonna click Save, Replace, yes. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go File, I'm gonna go to Adobe PDF, I'm gonna choose X1A because this might be printed at some point. So I'm gonna click XMA, I'm gonna, I have a InDesign assignment.pdf in there, uh, underscore PDF, the underscores for the space. I'm gonna click save, replace, yes. Uh, I wanna make sure that I have X1A. Compatibility is Acrobat 4, which is a good one. I wanna optimize for fast web view. From, I wanna go over to marks and bleeds, make sure that I have my well, I'm going to turn on bleed marks so you can see where the bleed ends, and I'm going to make sure you have my bleed settings there. Um, offset 0.083, that's fine. That's where how far offset the, the crop marks will be and the bleed marks will be. I'm going to click export. And here's my PDF. If you look, this is where my bleed is. So my bleed gets cut off right there. This line goes that way, that line goes that. So I have my bleed and everything is in here the way they should be and the program crashed. So I'm just going to stop the video right here.